Hare Krishna. So it's a pleasure to again be able to address this August crowd of devotees. And uh, unfortunately, for, unfortunately, I'm staying in a different place from the temple and I couldn't find any cartels here. So I'll just have to use my hands for chanting. Srila Prabhupada said that sometimes it is better just to clap because then you don't become distracted by playing instruments and you can concentrate more on the holy name. So we'll have to have that consciousness tonight. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Um, our usual host, Sri Rupa Prabhu, is not here today. She will, uh, she's traveling. So I'll just make a quick, quick introduction okay. and, um, about His Holiness Guru Prasad Swami. We are very happy to have you, Maharaj. Uh, he is a frequent visitor to um, our to the Simply Wonderful program. And he is an initiating guru, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. And he teaches in, um, for many decades in Texas, Mexico, Central and South America, Puerto Rico, Trinidad, and also India. So we are very happy to have you, Maharaj. And uh, we wanted to let the participants know that this um, talk is being recorded. And if you have any objections, please uh, send me a message on the chat. Okay, so no, I, already, I already accepted that. Okay. I got it Thank on you. the screen. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Maharaj, over to you. Thank you. you. Hare Krishna. Govinda Jaya Jaya, Gopala Jaya Jaya, Radha Ramana Hari, Govinda Jaya Jaya. Govinda Jaya Jaya, Gopala Jaya Jaya. Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, 
Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I go to Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, and I go to Hari Bo. Jaya Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Jaya Prabhupada. Jayam Stupada Paramahansa Puri Bhajaya Kacharya Ashto Tara Shatya Shishimad Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharashi Da Prabhupada Ki Jaya Nittali Da Pravishtom Vishnu Pada Ashto Tara Shatya Shishimad Shira Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Go Shami Maharaj Takur Prabhupada Ki Ananta Kuti Vaishnava Vrindi Ki Namacharya Shilhari Das Thakur Ki Shadgu Swami Ki Prem Sekho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Radha Shivas Adi Gaur Bhakti Vindiki Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopagopina Samakunda Radha Kunda Kiri Govardhan Ki Vrindavan Dham Ki Mayapadam Ki Kangamai Ki Jamunamai Ki Tulsi Devi Ki Bhakti Devi Ki Samabhita Bhakti Vindiki Shri Harinam Sankirtan ki, Brihat Viranga ki, Nittai Gaur Pemanandi. <clears throat> all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to Shri Guru, Shri Goranga. So I will, I pray that. By Srila Prabhupada's mercy, I will be able to uh, say something meaningful for the pleasure of all of you today. <clears throat> so we'll be reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita, the first chapter, texts <clears throat> 32 through 35. So I will just repeat the, the verse very quickly and uh, I'm not going to leave room. You can chant along with me if you like, and then we'll read Srila Prabhupada's translation and purport. Kim naro rajena govinda, kim boga jivite nava, yesham arte kangshitam no rajam boga sukhanicha. Taime vastitha yudhe pranam sattva danani cha acharya pitara putras tataiva cha pita maha matula svasura pautra shyala sambandina stata etanahantum itchami Nato pi marusudana, api trai lokara jasya, he took him no mahikrite, nihatya dartarashtrana, kam kapritis 
Chanadana. <clears throat> so uh, the word for word, uh, if every, everyone on your, if you, on your own device, if you like, you can look at the words as we go through the verse. They are important words and I will emphasize some of them, but for the sake of time, I just read the translation and purport. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Oh, Govinda, of what avail to us are a kingdom, happiness, or even life itself, when all those for whom we may desire them are now arrayed on this battlefield? Oh, Madhusudana, when teachers, fathers, sons, grandfathers, material uncles, fathers-in-law, grandsons, brothers-in-law, and other relatives are ready to give up their lives and properties and are standing before me. Why should I wish to kill them, even though they might otherwise kill me? O oh, maintainer of all living entities, I am not prepared to fight with them, even in exchange for the three worlds, let alone this earth. What pleasure will we derive from killing the sons of Dhritarashtra? Purport. Arjuna has dressed Lord Krishna as Govinda because Krishna is the object of all pleasures for cows and the senses. By using this significant word, Arjuna indicates that Krishna should understand what will satisfy Arjuna's senses? Uh, uh, actually, uh, none. Uh, Omagyana dimanandasya kinangjana sharakaya chakshurum militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya mano bishtam stapitam yena bhutale swayam kada. Mahyam Dharatishva Parantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatari Shatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadha Shri Vashari Gauda Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Panchakapatru Vyascha, Kripa Sindhu Vyavicha, Patitanam Babane Vyo, Vaishna Vyo, Namo Nama. So, Srila Prabhupada, I just wanted to mention, Srila Prabhupada takes this particular uh, understanding. Arjuna is indicating to Krishna. So actually, Arjuna is telling Krishna what Krishna should do. Uh, uh, Arjuna addressing Lord Krishna as Govinda means, you know, uh, the word Vindati, the functions of my senses, Govinda, go, Govindati, the functions of my senses, go. Therefore, please understand what I am thinking. Otherwise, instead of telling Arjuna, I mean, telling Krishna that please instruct me, please tell me, this comes later, of course. He's telling Krishna, this is what I want. So, so it, it, uh, from our Acharya's point of view, from Srila Prabhupada's point of view, it doesn't get off to a very good start. So we'll just go on with the first part. But Govinda is not meant for satisfying our senses. If we try to satisfy the senses of Govinda, however, then automatically our own senses are satisfied. So these are the two sentences from which I took the title of this. Otherwise, happiness will come. But if I look for happiness, it, it will be temporary happiness because it's based on my conditioning within the three modes of nature even if I get any happiness at all. And by instructing the Lord to give me happiness, then what am I doing? Uh, I'm 
I'm not situating myself in the position of surrender from which I can derive perfect happiness. But even that should not be my goal. My goal should be, here is Govinda, the Lord of my senses. Let me satisfy him. So we'll go on. So this is, this is Srila Prabhupada has set the scene here. Materially, everyone wants to satisfy his senses, and he wants God to be the order supplier for such satisfaction. The Lord will satisfy the senses of the living entities as much as they deserve, but not to the extent that they may covet. We should understand this phrase that, you know, as much as they deserve. So uh, what they deserve is determined by their karma, by their involvement with the three modes of nature. So really, Krishna is giving it to them through his energy. And when, they, when someone becomes a devotee, also Krishna will give them as much as they deserve. There's a very beautiful verse in the uh, fifth canto of the Bhagavatam. Very beautiful. And uh, I, hmm. it's just, I was trying to bring it up here. I think I, something happened. I just wanted to read that verse. I can't remember the whole verse. Um, anyway, it's not coming up for some reason. Let me try once more. But, uh, I don't know why it's not happening. Uh, anyway, and the verse basically says um, that the Lord said demigods are praying to to. Uh, they're offering their prayers to the Lord. And they say, my dear Lord, you want to satisfy. You, know, you want to satisfy everyone's desires. But if you see that those desires will again uh, cause more desires to be created, unnecessary desires. Of course, if it's desire for Krishna, there's no problem. Then instead of giving them those desires, you give them devotion, the process of devotional service, and you put your lotus feet on their head, even if that is not their particular uh, wish, then you do that for them. So this is, uh, this is actually a very, you know, very well understanding. Prophet says here, he wants to satisfy the, the living entity. But if he sees that there's an impediment, yasyaham anuginami, the harishe taddhanam shanai, then Shukadeva Goswami says that when Krishna wants to favor someone, the first thing he looks for is what obstacles may be there for pure devotion. And if he sees obstacles, he will take them away. So he's not actually taking anything away, he's removing obstacles so that you can have unlimited transcendental bliss, you can have uh, unlimited opportunities to serve Krishna. But when one takes the opposite way, namely when one tries to satisfy the senses of Govinda without desiring to satisfy one's own senses, then by the grace of Govinda, all desires of the living entity are satisfied. Arjun, Arjuna's deep affection for community and family members is exhibited here, partly due to his natural compassion for them. So there are two considerations in his affection. Uh, uh, later on in, in the uh, second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, uh, there's a test. Uh, Arjuna asks uh, that uh, kabhasa. He says, Krishna, how uh, kabhasa uh, and how is a devotee situated? And then he says, how does he talk? You know, uh, and and how, wh how does he talk? I mean, how does he respond uh, when somebody does something? Does he respond with affection? Does he respond with anger? Or does he respond with neutrality? 
So uh, different considerations. But if you want to satisfy the senses of Govinda, then you'll be happy. But if you're thinking of community, and just see, when we look at this verse, no? <laughs> so many considerations. Acharyas, fathers, sons, fathers-in-law, material uncles, grandfathers, grandsons, brothers-in-law, relatives. So, so many considerations. No? And uh, so this is why you know, we, have, we have all these extensions, uh, family members and relatives and so in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it, it, it speaks about this very famous verse. Pumsa striya mituni bhavametam. And when man and woman come together, there's an attachment. No. Tayuramito vridayagranti mahur. Vridayagranti. There is a knot within the heart. And that knot within the heart results in more knots or the knot becoming tighter. A whole grihakshatra sutapta vitaya. Then, when that knot is there, then there's the knot of griha. We must have a place to live. Kshetra, I must have a field of activities. Sutta apta, I have, uh, I have uh, predecessors and I have, uh, uh, I will have dependents or descendants. And now that I have. My father's in law, as Arjuna says, fathers in law, mothers in law. So now I have double. First, I had predecessors and descendants. Now I have double. No. Sutta apta vitaya, and it will require money. And so, what does this do? Janashimo hum aham mameti. This um, increases the, the, the identification with this world of I and mine. So, this is the unfortunate condition of the living entity when we, we come this way. So, uh, so Arjuna's deep affection for community and family is exhibited here partly due to his natural compassion. He also has Vaishnav compassion, no. but that's not prominent right now. That will come a little later. He is therefore not prepared to fight. Everyone wants to show his opulence to friends and relatives. But Arjuna fears that all his relatives and friends will be killed on the battlefield, and then he will be unable to share his opulence after victory. I hear, I love this statement of Srila Prabhupada. This is a typical calculation of material life. Uh, sometimes we're very proud. Uh, as Srila Prabhupada mentioned in another lecture, no, I, I just, Wrote something down here. Uh, someone comes, he gets these things, a whole big shetra. He has his house, a nice new house. Then you, you know, if, he, if he's a, a, a follower of the Vedas or a Vaishnava, sometimes we have the, uh, the um, you know, we have Agnihotra to bless the house. And then you invite everyone. Uh, Here's my nice house, everyone, oh, it's very nice, beautiful. Here are the bedrooms, here's this, here's that. Srila Prabhupada once in, in one program with a life member, he invited him and he said, this is my house, this is this, this is uh, so-and-so, and this is my wife, this is my son, this is my daughter. And Srila Prabhupada went, said to the side, I think it was even to Tamal Krishna Maharaj, this is my sex life, no. <laughs> this, is my, this is my creation. So typical calculation of material life. The transcendental life, however, is different. Since a devotee wants to satisfy the desires of the Lord, he can, Lord willing, this is a very important interjection by Srila Prabhupada, he can, Lord willing, accept all kinds of opulence for the service of the Lord. No, because why will the Lord be willing? Uh, because that person sh shows, just like Srila Prabhupada had to go through so many trials and tribulations. And he didn't need to show Krishna, but Krishna wanted to show us what is required to show Krishna that I'm actually we're going to use the opulence. If you give me opulence, I'm going to use it exclusively for, for your service. 
So first Krishna, he doesn't just take that on face value. Even Srila Prabhupada said, an astrologer told me that I would be the most wealthy man in India. And I thought, well, I can, then I can help these Kodiyamat devotees. I can support them and, and do many, so, so many things for them. So uh, Prabhupada was thinking that way. And later Prabhupada said, my Guru Maharaj taught me that we should not think having some opulence that it is a product of devotional service. Uh, Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur makes this point. It could be a product of my devotional service, but I should not think that way. No. And then, uh, uh, if the Lord is not willing, he should not accept a farthing. Everything depends on Krishna. Arjuna did not want to kill his relatives. And if there was any need to kill them, he desired that Krishna kill them personally. We'll, we'll talk about this a little later. Uh, this is a very, very important point. Uh, at this point, he did not know that Krishna had already killed them before their coming into the battlefield and that he was only to become an instrument of Krishna. And we can go back to a little bit to the history. You know, first, Krishna appealed to Duryodhana. You know, sometimes he appealed personally, sometimes he sent others. And Duryodhana, he said, just give the Pandavas five villages, not even five kingdoms, five villages. They are Kshatriyas, they must rule. And Duryodhana said, I will not give them uh, enough land that fits on the head, on the point of a pin. No. So right there, Krishna said, uh, of course, Krishna already, he wanted, uh, but he, you know, he gave the chance. He knew that Duryodhana wouldn't accept. Then he went to Dhritarashtra personally, and he spoke to Dhritarashtra, please persuade your sons to give up this ambition. And Dhritarashtra said, and this is amazing, and this shows us how powerful Maya can be. I know that you are Krishna. I know that you are Bhagavan. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But I cannot give up the affection for my son. That's how powerful Maya is. And so this is the setting. So Krishna he had every excuse, you know, he did, he did the needful. He went through the motions. But he had already determined, I want Yudhishthir. Yudhishthir is the proper person. Because otherwise, they may be very expert managers. Even Yudhishthir said, Duryodhana is expert manager. Yeah, he's a good king. But he wasn't giving. Uh, a, a, the, as Krishna says, evam parampara praptam imam rajarsheo vidu. He is not a rajarishi. He's a Raja, but he's not a Rishi. He may have some knowledge of fundamental, you know, uh, etiquette, by Vedic etiquette, but he's not like Yudhishthir. This fact is disclosed in the following chapters. Now, he was just to become an instrument for Krishna. As a natural devotee of the Lord, Arjuna did not like to retaliate against his miscreant cousins and brothers but it was the Lord's plan that they should all be killed. We've all experienced this. I think everyone, you know, we don't want to do something. And we don't want to do this service or we don't want to, you know, come to this degree of sacrifice in Krishna consciousness. But then we, we hear from some uh, Vaishnava, from Sri Guru or Vaishnava, we read in the Shastra, something, Srila Prabhupada's books, and it says, you should do this, or someone says, you need to do this. So, you know, we may not want to, he didn't want to, but the Lord's plan is that they should be killed. A devotee of the Lord does not retaliate against the wrongdoer, but the Lord does not tolerate any mischief done to a devotee by the miscreants. The Lord can excuse a person on his own account, but he excuses no one who has done harm to his devotees. Therefore, the Lord has determined to kill the miscreants, although Arjuna wanted to excuse them. So uh, this is uh, such a 
rich purport. I just wanted to say also that if we continue a series of Bhagavad Gita, I consider this, these verses to be the, the, the real crux of the first chapter. Up to this point, or up to uh, uh, a couple of verses before, it's uh, defining the battlefield, uh, the, the two armies, and then what follows is Arjuna's um, arguments based on, as Srila Prabhupada says, social convention, religious, uh, you know, religiosity, but the religiosity on the level of Manu Samhita, not religiosity on the level of, of Bhagavatam or, or the, the Bhagavad Gita, which is being spoken to him. So, um, so this is, uh, this is a very, very uh, wonderful um, explanation. Now, uh, Arjuna is, is emphasizing, they have given up the desire uh, uh, for life and wealth. Uh, so, he, you know, uh, otherwise, they've given up these things, but I'm not willing to give them up. So Arjuna is a devotee, there's some devotional compassion, but now he's thinking, he's already mentioned all these family ties and attachments. So Krishna really, uh, what Krishna wants to accomplish is that everyone goes back home, back to Godhead. Sahajyagya prajashrishta puruvacha prajapati anena prashivishadvam eshavoshtishta karmadu. That uh, in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, this is my plan. You do yagya. And by that yagya, you will live happily in this world. Otherwise, the, the, the way to be the happiest in this world, and externally speaking, is to do yagya. And then that yagya will allow you to go back home, back to Godhead. So Srila Prabhupada said, this is the perfect plan of the Lord to give everyone the maximum benefit. So Arjuna, he's, so, so the Lord, later on in Bhagavad Gita in the fourth chapter, he says, what is his plan? What is his plan? Yada, yada, hi dharma shakranir bhagavati bharata, bhitanama dharma sha. When there is a dharma, I come. Here, Duryodhana and Dhritarashtra, they are, uh, they, they, and, and uh, in a few later, verses later on, their dharma becomes apparent. So, uh, they have, there are six kinds of aggressors. Agnidho gararas chaiva shastir panir dhana paha shatra dhara pahari chat shari te yatataina atataina aggressors. So agnidho, uh, the arsonist, or one who uh, you know, defeats by uh, attacks with fire, one who poisons one who attacks with weapons, a thief, uh, one who, who usurps property and, and the stealer of one's wife. And Manusamita, that's from Prashishta Shmiti, Manusamita says, atatayinam ayantam hanya eva vicharayan natatayi vade dosho hunter bhavati kashjana. Without consideration, one should kill the aggressors as there is no fault in killing them. So uh, this is, these are instructions from uh, Dharma Shastras. And, but Ar and Arjuna knows this, but because of this compassion, is, which has arisen, you know, and he says in the verse, you know, he says in, in, in this particular verse that we're, we're studying here. He says that, um, that uh, I'm just going back to the, the verse here. He says that etan nahantum ichchami. I, my Lord, ichchami, you know, he's commanding Krishna, ichchami. I do not wish to kill them. Natopi madhusudana. And Srila Prabhupada 
when he spoke on this verse, he especially emphasized the, this word Madhusudana. No. He said, so, pi Madhusudana. And Srila Prabhupada mentions it here in his purport that Krishna, if you want them dead, why don't you kill them? You are Madhusudana. If you see these people as bad, then you kill them. No, I don't want to do it. No. This is not the way we should relate to Krishna. No. Krishna, I don't want to do this. You do it. So Krishna, as Srila Prabhupada says in the purport, becomes the order supplier. No. Krishna is now the order supplier. And so, um, Madhusudana. So Srila Prabhupada said that you are Madhusudana. That's wonderful. You kill, you know, you go ahead, you kill these, um, you kill these aggressors. You know, please, you kill them. And, but I'm not going to kill them. You know, so he says like that, that you, know, you should kill them, no problem. But don't make me kill them. You, you're, you're not, uh, you're Madhusudana, but you are not Yashoda Sudana. You are not Nanda Sudana. No, you are not. Uh, so you kill the Madhu demon. Madhu Paitaba Bhari, Hari Murari. No. Yes, you kill the Madhu demon. But why are you inducing me to kill uh, my kinsmen? The Prabhupada said, this is a criticism. No, because we have to see up to the point of the next chapter, verse number seven, Arjuna is still in the mood. He's still in the mood of friendship. So he can challenge. He's challenging Krishna. And he's also challenging Krishna with another, another particular word, you know, which is Janardana, another name of Krishna. You know. He says three names of Krishna, which are all challenging because of this mood of friendship. Therefore, as Srila Prabhupada instructs, that when there is a relationship of a guru disciple, the friendship becomes very secondary, which may arise after the disciple becomes learned and obedient. There may be more friendship, but it always has to be respectful friendship. It's never uh, like Krishna and his friends, where there's challenges. No, tadvani pranipatina. There must always be pranipata. There must always be respect. So, uh, so Arjuna is saying, you're Janardana. Janardana means uh, Jana Ardana, the maintainer of the living entities, or Jana Ardana could mean because you maintain the living entities, you, you create them, you maintain them, and you destroy them, meaning destroying their bodies. Of course, nahanyate uh, hanyamane, the soul is never destroyed. But uh, but you you so you know this is your business. So this is this is the friendship that Arjuna has, and he's demonstrating to Krishna that I don't want to um, I don't want to uh, you know I don't want to engage in this ghastly warfare, which he says later on. And, you know, this is because there's no benefit. So this is really mundane. Even Arjuna can, cannot believe he's saying this. Therefore, in the be beginning of the next chapter, Krishna begins to chastise him. How can you be in this moment of uh, this very moment of crisis, how can you have th these types of thoughts, this type of consciousness? No. You, you have to get out of this consciousness. That's, he immediately begins to instruct Arjuna. But then Arjuna gives more arguments. How can I kill my grandfather with arrows or Drona, my master who has taught me everything? The same thing he gave me, I take and kill him? How can I do this? No. So Arjuna is, is full of la this lamentation. And Krishna, uh, then Krishna, then Arjuna speaks. He awakens, his consciousness awakens that uh, no, he's a devotee and his consciousness awakens that uh, now, what does he say? He says, Karpanya dosha pahata svabhava. 
Pritchani ham dharma samudhichitta. Krishna, I realize that I've become bewildered by all these things. Therefore, uh, I, I, I beg you, yatstreya sanishtitam bruhitam me. I beg you that please, uh, you tell me clearly, Srila Prabhupada states that, that clearly means, clearly means, don't tell me what I want to hear. Although I've already requested that from you, but don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell me what is best for me. And in order that that can transpire, shishasteham shadima tvam papanam, then you, uh, I am, uh, I become, I've become your disciple. Please instruct me. Uh, I am a soul surrendered unto you. And this, so this is the beginning. But then after he says that, uh, you know, he's, he's, hey, he wanted to be your disciple. And then he realizes like here uh, in this particular verse, uh, Arjuna is saying in the beginning, Kim no Rajinagovinda, Kim Bogar Jivi, you know. Uh, why should I want this kingdom, O Govinda, when uh, those with whom I would enjoy it would be eliminated? Therefore, uh, I don't want this, this Rajam, this kingdom, Bogai, Boga. I don't want this enjoyment. What happiness will be there uh, if we kill? No, tam uh, tamima vastita yudhe. If in battle we kill, no, pranatakta dhanani cha. Although they are, uh, they're ready to give up their life and wealth, and then he goes through all the, and but he says, even if I get everything within the three worlds, no, apitrai lokya rajasya, no, hetu uh, kim nu mahikrite. What to speak of, of some little kingdom. Even if I got the three worlds, what to speak of some little kingdom. Mahikrite. No, I, I am not going to do this. And therefore, Janardana, if you want it done, do it yourself. No. As sometimes we say in English, if you want it done right, do it yourself. So basically, that's what Arjuna is telling Krishna. No. You want it done, you do it yourself. So... Uh, because all of these bodily considerations, as I just mentioned, as Rishabdev says, this is three diagranti. And the three diagranti, what does it do? Uh, the three diagranti is very dangerous. And therefore, Krishna instructs later on in Bhagavad Gita, Jayatobhishayan Bhum Sam, Sangha Steshu Pajayate, Sangha. Sangha Sangjayate Kama, that as soon as you contemplate the senses or relatives and friends and all these things, as soon as you contemplate that, then there will be attachment. And that attachment grows stronger. And then it turns into desires. I want this. I need this. I must have this. And when you don't get it, you know, then Kamat Krodho Bijayate then it's transformed into anger, then into illusion, then, then into uh, a deluded state and a loss of intelligence. And after a loss of intelligence, buddhi nasho pranashati, then we're again thrust uh, and pulled and forced by the modes of nature. No. Therefore, Krishna advises us in Bhagavad Gita to be situated in the mode of goodness. No. We should be situated in the mode of goodness because from there, Param. From that mode of goodness, we can be elevated to the platform of devotional service. But Krishna also warns us, we should not get stuck in the mode of goodness. The mode of goodness is liberating, but at the same time, it can also cre create a sense uh, of, of I, I am no, I'm very, not very knowledgeable. I'm very peaceful. Just like someone told me the other day, I don't want any hassles. I just want to be peaceful. Well, who is peaceful? Who is really peaceful? How can you be peaceful in this material world? Even if you create, you know, you try to create the most peaceful situation, you know, uh, and you, you know, you're some beautiful place, beautiful island, 
uh, and and then all of a sudden, you know, mosquitoes, snakes, uh, uh, too it's too hot or it's too. Even if you find the perfect climate and no mosquitoes, there were some islands, although with all the trade that went on hundreds of years ago, they brought mosquitoes and snakes on the ships. But, you know, like Fiji used to be one of those islands. Some of you are from Fiji. And it actually, at one point, there were no mosquitoes, but they came, you know, and because that is the arrangement. We can't, we can't have this utopian existence. The material world is Vaikuntha, that is utopian. It's already there. We don't have to create it. We just have to go. You know? We're trying to create a utopia in this world. Even now, you know, all the so much thrust. Let's be more ecological. Let's stop global, global uh, warming and all these things. Um, there's actually a beautiful quote about that because sometimes even devotees get stuck. And let me see if I can just find this quote from Srila Prabhupada, beautiful quote. And uh, I just have to find it here very quickly. And um, very beautiful quote from Prabhupada about getting into these secondary causes. I've, I've been a little bit on a campaign about secondary causes. So I wanted to read this quote. This was spoken by Srila Prabhupada in, uh, in Caracas, Venezuela. Instead of contemplating what will happen to this world, you have got a short duration of life, say 50, 60 years. You chant Hare Krishna and go back home, back to Godhead. Don't consider what will happen to this world. The nature will take care of it. You don't puzzle your brain with these thoughts. You utilize whatever time you have, you have got in your possession to go back home, back to Godhead. You cannot check it. Best thing is that you mold your life. Go back home, back to Godhead. Because people will go on with their rascal civilization. Natural consequences will be there. You should take advantage of whatever time you have got and become fully Krishna conscious and go back home. A beautiful quote that if anyone wants to look, the whole conversation is very beautiful. That was a morning walk in Caracas, Venezuela, 21st of February, 1975. So Srila Prabhupada is telling us, no, we, we don't need to uh, you know, get involved in all these uh, things that, that people, you know, they think, because they're thinking, they're actually thinking that I will create, we will create a you know, utopian society. If we just do this, if we just stop global warming, if we just, you know, uh, become more environmentally conscious, if we, uh, if we just stop all the wars, you know, the United Nations, and look what's happening now. You know, a country is being invaded, and nobody, they, they can't do too much. And why are they not doing too much? Oh, it may, may upset our economic interests. People are dying, but more important are economic interests. So this is, this is the world we live in. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada is saying, you know, you're not going to fix this place. You know, nobody has fixed it. It will automatically be fixed when it, when it can't be fixed anymore, when there's nothing left, when, when Vaishnava philosophy and Vedic knowledge can no longer prevail to any degree, then the arrangement is there, Kalki Avatar. He will come and he will fix everything. And then the whole process will start over. Srila Prabhupada explained one time. He said, first, at the end of Kali Yuga, everything dries up. And then the rains of devastation come. First, everything dries up, just dries up and burns up all the contamination, everything. And then the rains of devastation come and the earth fills up with water. And then there are beautiful islands for, uh, for uh, Satya Yuga, very beautiful. Everything's very nice. And the water starts going down. And of course, then scientists come and have all these evolution, uh, evolutionary ideas. But it's actually, it's all arranged by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So uh, 
So this, uh, you know, these, these bodily considerations, of course, they have meaning, they have purpose. Just like, um, you know, people are generally advised, you should get married, you should have family, you should have children, because that's a learning responsibility. Srila Prabhupada quoted uh, in several times that there was an economist, a British economist named Marshall, and Prabhupada quoted it in relation to this verse also. And so that economist, he said that, uh, you know, if you want to have steady workers, then what do you do? You hire uh, a grihasta or married person because they will be very responsible. They live in one place. They have to take care of their family. You don't hire a single man, which just becomes a little frustrated, they go away. So this is the basis of the economy, but it has its downside. It has its upside because as soon as you get married and you have children, so much responsibility. Before having children, sometimes there's a little, little bit of a, a lackadaisical mood. Let's enjoy. But no, well, you have to get a house. You have to, all these things that we just spoke about, uh, you know, from Rishav Dave's teachings. And then, but then when you have children, you learn everything is, is so nicely instilled in the arrangement of the Lord, even in family life. You have a child, you learn unconditional surrender. And then you have to take that, what you've already done. I've already done it. I had this little baby. The little baby was crying at two o'clock in the morning. I had to go and, and, and I want to go. Not that I had to, but I, I, was, I was happy to do it. So why can't you do that with Krishna? Here he comes in his baby form. In deity, of course, not Radha Nila Madhava. <laughs> He, he's, he looks very big, uh, just like when Krishna appeared in Mathura, then he became very big, but he's still in the mood of a, of a young, helpless child. We cut up his fruit, we cut up his meal, we, we paint uh, beautiful markings on him, we dress him, just like a baby. We've already, you know, so the lesson is there, just apply it to Krishna. The lesson of economics is there, apply it to Krishna. The family life is there. Offer the, offer the family to Krishna. And of course, Prabhupada said, if, you, if you can avoid that, uh, if you can avoid the whole thing, that's why in the Vedic system, first, one is trained as a brahmachari. And then after you're trained as a brahmachari, then you, uh, then if you can continue, very nice. If not, you get married. But there's always a responsibility. You know? And therefore, Arjuna declared to Krishna after surrendering. He wanted to make sure that Krishna understood that he was surrendered. So he says, Nahi prapashami mama panudyad. Oh, my Lord, I don't know what to do. Yachchokam ichchoshanam indriyanam. I am, my senses are drying up. You know, uh, like when, sometimes when we get in anxiety, our senses dry up. We can't feel any pleasure. Senses drying up means I don't feel any pleasure from anything in this world. My, I, you know, and so, and even if I got a kingdom without rival, Rajam Suranam, with the supremacy of the demigods, I, I see no relief. I see no no possibility of, of coming out of that. So, uh, so then Krishna, in the next chapter, he begins to instruct Arjuna. You've spoken so many words. We'll see that coming in the next verses, after verse 35, 37, 36, 37. Arjuna begins to, um, you know, um, instruct Krishna, basically telling, giving his arguments and, and you know, then the family, Kula Dharma, family tradition will all be destroyed. And then Krishna, he patiently hears, you know, Srila Prabhupada said one time, when, when I'm preaching to someone, first I listen for five minutes. You no. Know, so, you know, I hear them. And then 
I, and then I, I defeat their argument. Of course, if their argument is good, then Srila Prabhupada would embellish on it. If their argument is not so good, then I simply defeat it. And Prabhupada doesn't give them a whole much, a whole lot more chance to speak, unless it's a nice conversation with a very respectful person, then Prabhupada, of course, goes back and forth. So uh, Krishna says, Pragyavadam Shabhasya say, uh, that you're speaking learned words. But but you're missing the point, Arjuna. What is the difference between a living body and a dead body? The presence of the soul, actually there's no difference in the body, but the presence of the soul uh, animates the body. In Latin, the word for soul is anima, which from animation comes from anima, the soul. It animates the body. And so... Uh, don't lament, Arjuna. This lamentation is not, not good for you. So this was uh, Krishna's argument. You know? uh, otherwise, he's saying, you're speaking such high philosophy, but you're lamenting. So Prabhupada gave one lecture once. He's called this vulture consciousness. You know? That vulture consciousness means, just like the vulture flies very, very high, way up there in the sky, but he's looking down. He has his, his vision is on the ground. So we should not, uh, you know, just theoretically know things and, and then uh, the, the mundane modes of nature pull us down uh, from our lofty thoughts. Our reality becomes, I am attracted to the senses. So this is the example that's given here. So uh, this is kind of a resume of this chapter. And if we continue with these, uh, these, this series, I could try to every, uh, maybe every time give a, a new chapter and highlight different aspects of it and try to pick the most salient and important verse. And in some chapters that may require uh, one or two sessions, especially chapter nine, uh, chapter 10, it's hard to pick out one verse. I mean, some are very instructive chapters. And, uh, but anyway, I, I can try to do something like that if you would like. I'm your servant, so you just tell me what to do, and I'll try to do it to the best of my ability. So we'll stop here. Are there any questions, comments uh, from anyone? can raise your hand or you can write it in the chat. I'll just open up my chat here. Okay, so uh, if anyone would like to ask a question. Yes. Uh, Kishore, Kishori Priya, Devi. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Uh, 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 my question was related to the point that you made, you know, uh, some, like Arjuna was saying, okay, I don't want to do this, you do this Krishna for me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, sometimes we face that situation where we feel that um, Inaction is better than action, mm -hmm. uh, and we're not sure. Uh, in that case, in that, in that, in those situations, um, what are the, what is the consequence of that? Uh, is it is it something similar to what you were mentioning uh, in a previous class that if we do not praise Krishna, then we like if we don't glorify Krishna, we'll glorify somebody else. So if we don't do this action, we'll do something else, which is wrong. Is that what is the consequence of that? Well, Krishna says that if you really understand karma, if you really understand action and reaction, you see action in inaction and inaction in action. So sometimes being inactive, and of course, we can go on to the, you know, Arjuna's question about how does someone, how are they situated, how do they walk, how do they sit, how do they talk, how do they sit, how do they walk? So, 
uh, these, you know, they're, they're one, one of them is considered, how do you respond to others? How do you, you know, what is the condition of your mind first? How do you respond to others? What do you, how do you not respond? How do you know when not to respond? And that's an important consideration. And then finally, what do you do? You know, what are your actions? What are the proper actions for one who is situated uh, on the spiritual platform, on the transcendental platform? So the main thing there is just, you know, to, to understand Krishna's instructions to the point where we understand how to, you know, how to act and how not to act. Just like, you know, Krishna says uh, about demons, vritti cha vritti cha. You know, that sometimes they don't know what to do and, and, and they don't know what to do and what not to do. And Prabhupada said, for the devotee, just the opposite. He knows what to do and he knows what not to do. So the, the demon or the materialist, they don't know what to do and what not to do. And a devotee knows just the opposite. So, and so this is the benefit of Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Maharaj. Oh, Hare Krishna. Uh, let me see. So my, uh, Chakrapani. Hare Krishna, Guru. Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, Guru, you, uh, you were talking about the, to please the senses uh, or to please our senses instead of pleasing uh, Krishna within the senses. No? And, uh, you talked the other day in a class that uh, uh, to please the senses is not, uh, it's not just a particular gratification. You know? uh, that, uh, for example, for, for uh, in, in the term of yes, luxuria, uh, we see luxuria yes, in a particular uh, sense that we, we want to please actually our senses. So can you explain a little bit about that? Um, can you repeat that last part again? I'm sorry. But like we, we see the, the so to please our senses, yes, like, like uh, lost, no? That uh, uh, we, we understand that, uh, that to please our senses is just that particular, that particular, uh, how you, how you explain it? That particular sense, no? That, that, that uh, we, we always think that they say, for example, uh, to please our sense with the opposite sense. Well, you know, the Bhagavatam, as we've already discussed this in our, in our, you know, speaking on the Bhagavatam and the first canto and second chapter, that Krishna says, what is enjoyable and what is not enjoyable. What is enjoyable is um, that which help, keeps the body and the soul together so that, uh, that, that we can actually concentrate on uh, you know, Brahma Jigyasa or understanding the absolute truth. So pleasing the senses is necessary for maintaining the body you know, to some degree, but to the degree that it fulfills that function of, of being the foundation, that the body is healthy, the mind is healthy. If our body is not healthy and our mind is not healthy, then it's difficult to, you know, to, to perform service, it's difficult to concentrate. Of course, everybody will come to the point where the body is not so healthy, you know, but we try to keep just like Srila Prabhupada, his body was, was destroyed practically, but his consciousness was clear. So this is our duty. Keep the body healthy as long as possible. Don't get carried away. Just, you know, please the sense, the pleasure of the senses is there to allow me to maintain this body nicely. And then I concentrate on Krishna. Uh, but if we, if we have the mentality of that life is for pleasing these senses, just like the materialistic mind thinks that the whole creation 
And Krishna speaks about this. Jayedam dharate jagat. They think that the whole jagat is for my exploitation. That the whole thing is, is, you know, all the animals are for my eating. Just like I saw an article, I mentioned it the other day in, in, in a program here in Trinidad, that, uh, that, you know, that it was an article about, we need to, to cultivate nice, healthy, fatty worms. They're a good source of protein. You know, so let's, yeah, you know, we've exploited the cows, you know, and, but they're, you know, they're a little fatty and their fat's not so good. So let's exploit the insects now. And then after we exploit the insects, and now let's go to Mars, let's go to the moon, see what we can exploit. So this is the, this is the mentality that, and ultimately it's, it's the same, it's what Arjuna, all this stems from this very mentality that Krishna, your duty is to be Govinda. Govinda does mean that he gives pleasure to the senses, but he gives pleasure to the senses when we give pleasure to him. But we shouldn't do it uh, under that formula. Oh, well, I want pleasure, so I'll give pleasure to Krishna. That's just business. No. Prahlad Maharaj rejected that. He said, I don't want cosmic uh, commerce. No, I don't want to you know, serve you and you give me something and you give me some blessing. But the Lord said, no, because your prayers are beautiful, I want to give you some. I know you didn't do that. And so but Prahlad said, I just want your devotional service. So the Lord is always, that, that test is always there. Are you going to choose the pleasure, the happiness of this world, or are you going to give pleasure to Krishna? Even in the Christian Bible, it says better to give than to receive. And receiving means ego, and giving means uh, the heart has become purified. Of course, yeah, giving to Krishna, if we give to someone else, that's the mode of goodness. Can also be the mode of passion. No, if I give with, with a sense of return, I'll give you this. A lot of times, in modern marriages, when there's no spirituality, it's basically business. No, I'll give you this. You give me this. No. And and as long as that you know fair trade agreement is going on nicely, then we're married. And as soon as there's no fair trade agreement, then oh, we separate. So. I hope that that's answers your question. Now there are some questions here. Uh, how does we, how do we know what Krishna plans for us, or what is his order to us to carry out? Well, that's what just what we're doing now. We hear Bhagavad Gita. No. How do we know Hari Guru Vaishnava Bhagavad Gita? We hear from Krishna. No. Well, we get instruction from Paramatma and we hear Krishna, Bhagavad Gita, Uddhava Gita, so many instructions of the Lord throughout the Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, so many instructions. And then Hari Guru Vaishnava, the real spiritual master tells us what to do. The Vaishnava, you know, we've got so many sources of perfect knowledge. Uh, if we you, practically, if we don't take advantage of them, it's ignorance. I mean, we're ignoring five perfect fountainheads of pure transcendental knowledge. Because why? Because the modes of nature has captured, have captured our consciousness. So here's another question. Can you please kindly describe a little more about what Krishna advised to Arjuna after Arjuna said, my senses are drying up in such lamentation? What did Krishna say after that? First of all, Krishna smiled. Krishna didn't say anything. He wanted to see what was Arjuna's resolve. So he smiled, basically saying that, you know, you say you're surrendered to me. Let's see. And then what did he do? He called Arjuna a fool. Ashochas and Ashochas from. So that's a test. You know? Just like we get called a fool either directly or, or by, by wasting our time 
in pursuit of unnecessary material desires. That's Krishna calling us a fool. Then we finally realize, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And then we start to get uh, transcendental knowledge. So that's, that's what Krishna did afterwards. Because Arjuna, after he said that, you know, he was so frustrated that he, he sat down, he, he put aside his bow and his arrow. Actually, Arjuna had said previously, I will never be separated. While I am alive, I will never be separated by my, from my bow and arrow. And, and he separated himself, showing how grave, how in what a, a devastated uh, state of consciousness he was. And, and then Krishna could instruct him. So Krishna is instructing us also when our senses dry up, when we don't know what to do, when we can't find the purpose of life, what do we do? We go to Bhagavad Gita, we hear Krishna, we hear the Vaishnavas, we perform devotional service, and our senses become replenished. I hope that's satisfactory. Uh, Krishna's first word in Bhagavad Gita is Partha, uh, a name related uh, to Arjuna's mother. Is this significant? Yes. It means, uh, and he says this because Arjuna is lamenting, Arjuna is taking a position of ignorance, Arjuna is showing doubts. So Krishna basically is by saying Partha, he's saying, you come from the Jadu dynasty. You, uh, you, come from, uh, you come from the Kuru dynasty. You come from this wonderful lineage of great kings and queens. Why are you acting like this? Uh, so that's the, the significance of Partha. Uh, Radha Balava Prabhu. Krishna Maharaj, please accept my basis. So basically, some of these arguments that Krishna told uh, Arjuna, you know, he called him a fool. He says, while you're speaking learned words, you're still speaking the words of a fool. But some of these, like the evil deeds which destroy the family tradition, give rise to unwanted children, you know, uh, these kind of community projects are devastated. Now, so basically, the unwanted population, you know, because an increase of unwanted population causes hellish life. So we are preaching against that because we don't want, you know, we're preaching uh, Varnashram Dharma, we're preaching uh, uh, children in Krishna consciousness, in married life, not illicit sex. So how can we, you know, if someone faces us with a situation, I guess, and says, well, why are you saying this now? Krishna said something different. How can... Uh, yes, seems like we should take Arjuna's side. But Krishna, is, is, he's not against that. He's just saying that first you have to establish your position. No. Then when we're running society, yes, we want Varnashram, we want nice families, we want nice children, but that's not, otherwise Krishna is basically saying, yeah, your arguments are good, they're good social arguments, but first, the first thing's first, and the first thing first is you have to understand you're not this body, and you have to stop lamenting. Then when you stop lamenting, you understand you're not this body, you take up devotional service, then just like us, you know, otherwise Prabhupada never said, in the beginning of the movement, I want Varnashram. No. Prabhupada said the same thing as Krishna. He taught us first, we're not this body. Then he taught us the process of devotional service. Then to spread devotional service, we distribute books and magazines and you know, Harinam Sankirtan, so many different methods, lectures. And then once we do all that, then people come. And then we have to make the social consideration. But that social consideration also should be Daivi Varnash. Not just to have, you know, a good population that has good qualities. Because as it says in the Bhagavatam, Harava Bhakta Sikuto Mahatuna. Someone may have all good qualities, but if they don't have bhakti, 
And all those qualities are just mundane. Even the 26 qualities of a devotee, if the most important quality, which is surrender to Krishna, which is called the, the, uh, the, the most important of all the qualities, then the other 25 are just mundane if the, if the surrender is not there. So there are many beautiful poets. There are many humble persons. So, so that's the point. Yes, we want those things. And Krishna also wants those things. He speaks later on about, you know, uh, different, just like when he speaks about the modes of nature. And so he's speaking about how to, how to navigate this world. He doesn't go into Varnashram so much. Uh, that's more in, in the Bhagavatam. But so anyway, that's the point. First, you have to, just like one devotee wrote to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada and he said, Prabhupada, I want to study Ayurveda. And Prabhupada said, no. So he couldn't understand. You know, Ayurveda is like, it's in our line, it's Vedic, and, and that way I have to maintain my family. And Prabhupada said, what, ha what will happen if you die studying Ayurveda? So basically Prabhupada was saying, whatever you do, Ayurveda, carpenter, you know, uh, president, president of a country, whatever you do, first you learn to be Krishna conscious. And then you can, you know, then, then your, whatever you did or whatever you studied will be meaningful. And, and in the process of studying or learning it, if something happens, you're Krishna conscious. I could tell a story about that, but it's a little late for me for, to go into that story. It's kind of a long one. So <laughs> some other time I could tell it. Thank you, Maharaj, for, for the answer to that question. All right, Krishna. Uh, any other question? Uh, yes, Bhagavan Narada. Hi, Krishna Guru Maharaj, my basances. Um, you know, we're, we're in this digital age, and it seems to like be progressing even quicker with this whole kind of like web three thing that's happening, you know? It's all nonsense. So, you know, it's going to get heavier than what it is, but, you know, it seems like sometimes as devotees or aspiring devotees, we can get a little sidetracked and we can get a little caught up to where it's like every little bit of service that we perform or anytime we distribute a book or anytime we give a class, we have to take the selfie stick now, you know, and like, what advice do you have for that? I mean, that's just now what to speak when everything becomes completely virtual with the headset. Like, at what point is it just, it feels like it can be dangerous. Yes, we want to inspire one another, but then, you know, it can really kind of contaminate the mood of the persons that we're trying to help and our process as well. And it's a very innocent thing to do. What advice do you have for these things? Just ask them. Do you think the people in Ukraine are thinking about Web3? No. Otherwise, we'll all be confronted by the time of death. And if you're, you know, this, this all this Web3 and virtual existence and virtual trading, it's all, you know, it's just people, their ego is just increasing more and more. And I, the result will be neurosis. No. People just become neurotic and, 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 you know, it's almost like creating a, a race of schizophrenics, you know, that they have two existences. I go out and I go to the grocery store and get my peanut butter and jelly. And then I come back and go into my web world. And, you know, it's so crazy. That's why I say, you know, um, that's why I, I, I had a program in, in with my zone, my zone's a little austere. So I, I proposed many years ago that young people, just like the Christians do, we should send our young devotees to a difficult area and let them do missionary service and see what the what the reality of the world is, you know. Because when you sit around in America with all these facilities and people think, 
well, if I don't have a good internet connection, what will I do? You know, how will I survive without a, you know, at least, you know, 50 megabytes of speed? Well, how will I, how can I exist? So it's just, it's just like we've seen these different transformations of, of material boredom. Like the young people a few years ago, it was like popular, you know, you wore these little spikes and, and you know, like inflicting self-injury. Otherwise, they got so burnt out on, on sensual pleasure that the pleasure, uh, okay, let's, let's cause some pain and experience that. It's just groping, groping to try to squeeze the blood out of a carrot. You know? And, and uh, you know, it's just the web three or all these things is just a very elaborate version of the same thing. Trying to squeeze some pleasure out of material nature. But it feels like if we don't catch up, we could be left behind with relevance in our society. You know, and that's also dangerous on our part because some, sometimes we get caught in the web, literally. We get distracted. So it's like, where's the balance? How do we have that balance? I mean, just 20 years ago, nobody had a cell phone. Nobody yeah. could text. Nobody could send pictures. Now it's the norm. If you're a devotee and you don't have a cell phone, then, you know. So what to speak well, to all the other things? That dep it depends on what pictures you're selling and who you're talking to, what pictures you're sending. If you're sending pictures of Krishna to enliven someone, if you're sending pictures of me at the beach, you know, uh, or me in, the, in skiing, or me in my new bathing suit. And so, you know, as Prabhupada said, we can use everything in Krishna's service. But if you study the life of Prabhupada, he used many things, but he always kept the simplicity of Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada's famous theme, simple living, high thinking. When, when living becomes too complex, thinking suffers. There's no time for thinking. There's no time for deeply studying Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chaitanya. That's the reality. So we can't, you know, we can, we can uh, to a certain degree, use any degree of technology. But if you get caught up in it, as that's what Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, if you go fishing, don't get pulled in the water. So otherwise, don't get so big of a fish that the fish pulls you in the water. So don't, don't get into technology or whatever to the degree or ecology, as I was saying before, that that becomes your purpose of life, you know, uh, to be a vegan or to, you know, uh, and all these things. It's just, uh, you know, we, do, we didn't see Prabhupada doing any of these things. He utilized things. You know, we, could, we should utilize technology or anything to the point that it spreads Krishna consciousness. When it becomes, when it decreases my spreading of Krishna consciousness because I become absorbed in some secondary mundane consideration, then, then I'm not progressing, I'm digressing. Thank you. So I think because of the time, especially my time, it's 1030 here. <laughs> so uh, maybe we'll stop here and uh, uh, we'll continue the next time. Sarva Boma Prabhu is very nicely uh, organizing these programs with different speakers and for the benefits. So whenever he instructs me that I should speak again, I will do so. <laughs> and thank you all very much for your, your attention. Thank you so much, Marge, for such an enlightening class and for taking, to the, taking the time to share your knowledge with us and helping us become more focused. It's always Hare. nice to spend this time with you. Hare Krishna. 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 Please check out our announcements in the chat. Next week, we will um, we will have the pleasure of hearing from His Holiness Ratatva Jamaraj. So if you haven't already done so, please join our WhatsApp group. Tonight's recording can be found on our YouTube channel. The link for that is also in the chat. Um, so please share it with your friends. 
And if you're in the Houston area, please check out the events at the Bhakti Urban Farm. The address, the phone number, and the, and the link is in the chat. Thank you for spending this time with us. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.